Working on a large Stuart model steam plant and already this series is on part 19. Time seems to pass quickly when you're having fun. Fitting a water gauge blowdown valve that actually works and doesn't leak. Before I can start I need to drain the water out of the boiler. So here I'm removing the blanking plug that I put into the bottom part of the water gauge. It's at this point of the job that I really wish I hadn't have fitted such a long blanking plug because it's taking quite a while to remove it from the bottom part of the water gauge. Blanking plugs with long threads on them are very useful for blanking off boiler bushes when you're going to perform a hydraulic test, but for water at atmospheric pressure it's a bit over the top is this one. Almost there now and underneath the water gauge I have a plastic tub to catch the water. Both of the taps at the top of the boiler are open. The main steam tap is open and also the auxiliary tap that I put on the top to connect a compressed air line is also open. So the water's flowing quite well but it's taking ages. Time to think again, I don't think my lifespan is long enough to wait until this boiler's empty of water. As I frequently do, I'm going to use my common sense logic. First of all, I refit the blanking plug in the bottom part of the water gauge, but not all the way in, just enough to seal the water flow. What's the next step? Time to have a look at the parts that I got from Chris English at CME Engineering when I went over to West Yorkshire last week. Although I did buy these O-rings from Blackgates Engineering, the for the steam cylinders of the duplex pump, and it's a good idea to put them actually with the pump so I don't lose them. These are the other things I got from Chris at CME Engineering. This is a clack valve or check valve, and I need one of these for the speedy locomotive that I'm working on. I got two of them because I always keep one in stock. This is a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch water gauge. This is hopefully going to be for the meter made locomotive. And this wondrous thing is a whistle valve. These are really well made. It's a whistle valve for this type of whistle, or any other whistle, if you use a union adapter. The action of operation is very positive, and these type of valves pass quite a lot more steam than the smaller ones. They're ideally suited for larger whistles that need a lot of steam. When I went over to see my friend Chris English, I asked him if it was possible to supply me with some 180 degree, 3 16 by 40 threads per inch globe valves. Normally these are fully assembled and painted black, but I asked him if I could have some that were part finished. And that would save me the time of having to remove the black paint, because for this job I need to polish up the valve. These are beautifully made, and these are not all CNC manufactured. Chris actually turns a lot of these parts. The physical fit of the gland nut is perfection, and with the o-ring inside there it's never going to leak. This clip shows me spinning on the hand wheel, and once again, these are not made by CNC. I've actually seen him making them, and it's a specially modified rotary table underneath a small cutter fitted in the milling machine. The hand wheel screws onto the shaft and is locked in place with a lock nut. After assembly, I polished up the valve, and here I'm fitting it to the bottom part of the water gauge. As I mentioned previously, I use my brain with this. The boiler still has quite a lot of water in it, but I figured out. If I shut the valves at the top of the boiler, the subsequent vacuum would prevent the water from coming out, and indeed it did. In this clip, very carefully using my trusty back or spanner, I'm screwing the body of the globe valve into the correct position. Retrospectively, it would have been a good idea to have used a piece of cloth around the valve body as I screwed it into position. But this is just too exciting, a blowdown valve fitted to one of these type of water gauges that won't leak. Well that is, at least after I fit this bit. Once again, with the application of a bit of Loctite 542 to seal it, this clip shows me screwing the tap assembly in place, after which I tighten it up with my Barco spanner. And yes, I always use Barco spanners where possible. The jaws are so broad and you can clamp them tight and they never round the metal. The jaws on the small model engineering type spanners that I have are okay for most jobs, but they're a little bit on the thin side. Besides, the amount of time that you save using a Barco adjustable spanner, and notice I say Barco adjustable spanner, not a cheap crappy one, makes it well worth using them just to speed the job up. In a live steam application, when you're working on steam locomotives, particularly if they're in steam, it's always a good idea to have a Barco spanner about your person. Because if you get a problem such as low water, leaking clack, etc, etc, you can quickly correct the problem with a Barco spanner. No time is wasted looking for the correct size spanner, 
All you have to do is adjust the barcode spanner to fit the size of nut, bolt or steam union that you want to undo, or tighten up whichever the case may be, and sometimes it can be a real lifesaver, or an engine or boiler saver should I say. If you're running a steam locomotive you may be right round the other side of the track and get some sort of problem and you don't have any time to run back to the start to find the spanner sets. You just get out your barco. And that's it, the barco spanner's done its job once again. Does the blowdown valve work? Well yes of course it does. I've opened the valves at the top to let some air in and now it's dribbling water all over the baseboard which of course is easily wiped away. That's another small job completed to a good standard on this lovely steam plant. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.